Okay, so first to kind of recreate the situation our client's having, um, basically he's created a beam system, um, but out of the box the uh, Revit does not have a, you know, a cold form C channels um, that can be used in a beam system. Um, so we went on to Autodesk Seek and downloaded a family, and I'm going to go ahead and load that family into this project. So we loaded it in, and now it is not available under our beam types. Um, but you'll notice where it did come in under detail items, C joist section. So what was actually downloaded was a detail component. Um, and you can see when I place it here, it's be real small, but that's all it is. And really all this family is is 2D line work um, with brought in a few different types. So it's parametric. But it's something that we would use in a drafting view or perhaps a model view to uh, add some detail to a certain section of the model. Um, but it's not going to be able to function in a beam system because um, it doesn't have a 3D component to it. Uh, so there's a few ways when you download something from Seek to be able to tell um, if it's what you actually want. So if I just type in C joist here, this is the one that he grabbed. Um, if we go into this, it's going to give us a description, detail components. Um, so this starts to help you know that it's not uh, a beam, um, it's just for a detail component. The next thing, you know, maybe this isn't filled out at all, um, and just a good practice anytime you download anything from Seek or any other source where, you know, it's not in-house, let's go ahead and open it, and we can take a look at this. Um, and this is good to check out to make sure it's to your liking. Uh, a lot of times the annotation categories that drive... Um, the family are hidden, so we're going to go ahead and turn them on. So you can start to see the parametric parameters that are controlling this uh, detail component. So if I come up to here and click on family category and parameters detail items, so that's how we know um, this is a 2D element, um, as well as you'll notice the 3D view isn't even um, available uh, because the template that's used to create these is uh, it's just 2D. Um, and you really just have the reference level. It's not even like I can go to a side view. You'll notice the view cube isn't here. Um, so that starts to tell us this is not what we actually want. So let's go ahead and help them out. Let's um, close out of this. And we're going to start a new family. <clears throat> now that uh, C joist section was used with detail component template, this one right here. But what we're doing is creating a structural um, framing and it's going to be a beam. So this is the template we want to use. So if we go ahead and open this up, um, and templates are already set up so you can kind of get an idea of what you should be working with. So you see this is the length, these two reference planes are the length, that's what's going to drive um, the length of the beam, even within the beam system. Um, and if I go ahead and go to a 3D view, I just like change this to shaded, you'll see they give us like this dumb block. And basically I can edit this extrusion and create the profile that we want to have, um, which in this case is that uh, cold form C section. So all I'm going to have to do is come into here, and I want to edit this extrusion. And there we see the actual extrusion. It's basically just a box, and then we let it know how far to extrude. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and come down to this left window. And you'll notice when I click on this, these lock uh, marks come up and basically these are constraints and basically it's locking this sketch to these reference lines so basically I can create um, parameters such as uh, depth and height of this beam and then basically as I change those parameters it shifts the reference planes and it'll pull and and, and push this sketch uh, and therefore adjusting the extrusion so I'm gonna go ahead and delete all these lines and I'm going to create what I need for this C joist section. So I'm going to go ahead and basically, first I'm just going to do a I'm going to do chain so it drags around here, a rough sketch of what it's going to look like. Something like this, something like this. Um, and next, what I'm going to do is lock um, 
these sketch lines to the reference point. So I'm just going to use the align command, AL, it's a shortcut. Lock that up there. Lock that there. And just run around this, like so. Okay, so now that I have that, um, I want to offset this, and I think it was a 16th was what that family was. And this is something you can just, you know, open up your structural book and figure everything out. So we're going to use the offset command. OF is a shortcut. And need to change my distance to a 16th. And now I can zoom in a little here. I'm going to use tab. And that's all set somewhat. I still um, need to create a constraint so that this family moves properly um, with that offset. Basically what that means is I have to whoop, lock it to a sixteenth off. So basically what I'm going to do is DI for dimension is a shortcut aligned and I can go ahead and hit that there and lock that. So now anywhere that this top line moves that's going to stay a sixteenth away. It's going to stay with that constraint. And now we're working with giant dimensions here so we're going to go, since it's annotative, I'm going to jump down something like this and it's going to start to make it a little easier to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and find that lock tab. It's all the way down here. Bring that up there. And lock it all the way around here. Okay, so we got everything locked. Now what I want to do is create a uh, height parameter. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to work off of the reference plane since these sketch lines are already attached to it. They'll work with that Hit there and there. And now when I select this, I'm going to add a parameter. And this is going to be height. Um, if we wanted these to be scheduled, we'd want a shared parameter, but I'm just going to keep it simple. We're just going to work off of a family parameter here. Um, type, I want it to apply um, to every, uh, well in this case, C joist type, so that's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and group it under um, identity data, or actually dimensions, I think. There's a, there we go. Hit OK. So that's set. I'm going to do the same thing for width. And just check down on the bottom left corner here. It's the status bar to make sure you're selected, the reference plane. That's good. And I can go ahead and select that. Add parameter. Um, and this is going to be, I'm going to call it depth. Actually, I'm going to call it um, width. I guess height should actually be depth, but when you do yours, you can go ahead and make it that. And since we're adding a parameter to a dimension, that's why it's already locked into type of parameter length. Um, otherwise, I could be able to switch that when I'm creating a parameter. So now I have that. And then the last one we have here is this is the lip. I'm go ahead and dimension that. Oh. So that's set. So now all I have to do for this one is just click on it and I can pick lip. Okay, so we got that. Um, next thing is we want this to flex around this center point um, so that when the dimensions change, these two sides go out in equal distance. And what I'm going to do there is just create what's called an equality constraint. That guy, that guy. And then I'm going to hit this EQ, which is kind of hard to see. So we create that equality constraint and do the same thing on this side here. That's locked in. Well, actually, I did not need to do it on top and bottom. I meant to do it on top and the side here. And 
just try to you know, pull these out more to keep things a little cleaner. Um, and now I'm going to do what's called um, flexing the model, which means I'm going to take this line and see how it adjusts, make sure everything's working properly. It's staying at a 16th since that's locked in. Bring it in. It's looking good. Let's pull these guys out a little bit here. Flex the top here, make sure that's working properly. Oop. Brought in a little too close because that lip started to overlap. That's okay, stretch out. So it looks like it's working all right here. So now what I can do is go ahead and uh, finish this sketch. So I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and come to my 3D view, see what we're working with here. So there's our C joist section. Okay, and for our purposes, and we're just using this as, you know, for a documentation tool, um, so that when we cut sections, we get, you know, a nice uh, preview of our C-section joists. Um, but, and then this line is what is shown up in, shows up in the course scale view. So if I go to visibility settings, that's how you can tell it's only going to show in course. So if I went to course, it'll give us more of a line, line frame drawing. Um, but with this at this stage, I can go ahead and just load it into the project. And it's asked me to insert right away, but what I want to do is apply it to this beam system. So I click on the system, and now you'll see um, it's just set to family to 12 inch. So I can click on that, and then I can go to my 3D view, and there, now we have them placed in there. Uh, last thing I want to show you, if we go back to editing this family, um, those parameters that we created, we can create more types within this family now. So I have this 12 inch that I set up, and I don't know if these numbers are exactly right. You'll have to look in your steel book. Um, but I could do new, and maybe we have an 8 inch depth on this next one. Um, and then from in here, this is where I could adjust. Uh, this would be 8. Maybe this still is 4. I don't know. We'll have to, you'll have to look that up. But um, I can hit apply. Okay, and if I load that into the project, I'm going to go ahead and overwrite. And now, when I click on this, you'll notice that both types are now available um, from this drop down. So I could quickly switch to 8 inch, back to 3D view. Um, and you see how it's a little um, shorter and looks fatter just because it came down shorter. Um, but hopefully that gives you a rough idea, and if you want to do a Z-Perlin, it would be the same way. You just have to sketch that extrusion profile. Um, but it get, might get a little more tricky with setting up the parameters and what you lock to what to make sure it's, it's controlled parametrically correctly. Um, but that gives you a, a, you know, a rough overview. Thanks a lot.